at that time. He really likes to go left, Lamar Murray. Pull up and shoot that jump shot. Jason Kidd, who's a fine rebounder, was trying to get in a position to rebound a miss and wound up with the ball, but that was certainly a shot that Lamar Murray could have taken. And the key to this once we win zone, to play with patience and really look to attack the baseline. Move the ball around and see if you can exploit the fact that there's only one defender back. Edney can't find the mark. Carver with the putback short, but there's Ed O'Bannon, the junior, the leader of this team, bringing his team to within four. He has 22. Stepping out this time on Jameson. Tried to find Kidd, and it's a four on two. Edney, nice dish. But a foul before the pass. Count really trying to exploit Cameron Dollar. He's been assigned to Monty Buckley. And I thought Cal that time was really guilty of looking too much to the inside. You see Jameson, he's really trying to find him. Find Monty Buckley on the inside, and Dollar just makes a great play on the ball for the interception. And there was nobody in the neighborhood. Henson, Todd Bozeman, calling a timeout. His team with a four-point lead over Houston. And good sequence that time for the Bruins, Larry. When I talked to Todd Bozeman yesterday at his basketball practice, he said, we must control the dribble penetration of Ty Edmund and not allow him to get in the paint. The Bruins can tie with a two or go up one with a three. Edney taking it again. The little man telling everyone, get onto my back and I'll take you on. Get onto my back and I'll take you for a ride to the land of the undefeated. You know, Tyus can find cracks and crevices in your defense where there are none. Nice up fake to get Buckley up in the air. And he's so athletic. You know, you, you, you watch him and you get so amazed by his quickness, but he's also a terrific little athlete. When he gets in the air, he can change the shot, draw contact on the body, and still complete the play. He misses the first of two. UCLA just shooting 63% from the line this year. But look what they've done against Cal in the last 6.45, a 19 to 6 advantage. They've gotten some of that in transition, but a lot of that has been Ed O'Bannon rising to the occasion of playing a much better second half than he did the first. Yeah, O'Bannon the leading scorer for UCLA with 22. Jason Kidd with the ball, his team up one. Bruins still in a man. to play. Here's Kidd on the team game. Jamison trying to find the mark. This time he got Jamison with six to lead back up to two. Very important for Cal that Ryan Jamison have confidence in that shot because it's a shot that has been available to him all season long. A lot of teams have tested his shooting and if he can hit that shot, he's going to keep California ahead in this ball game. Edney short again. Foul called against Cameron Dollar. Larry, are you surprised, or what's the thinking of Jim Harris going with Dollar and Edney and putting Tarver up to the three spot? Well, Sean Tarver's a very, very good athlete, and he has played in the small forward position before. And I think Jimmy's probably doing that to give himself a better defensive matchup, and probably against that zone defense, he's given himself a third outside shooter. See if Tarver can make it work. Here's Kidd for the moment. And he is a man of the moment. He's just a man. Jason Kidd with his ninth point of the game. And the lead is up to five. Tarver. Just what you were talking about, Larry. The perimeter jump shot. 21 Tarver. Must extend that zone defense. Contact. It's against Lamont Murray. That's his third. And that was a good call by, by Charlie Range. Lamar Murray, when he caught the ball on the fast break, you've got to look and analyze where the defense is. And Ed O'Bannon had a pretty good position. Lamar would have been far better served to stop and take that five to eight foot little bank shot there. That's a very makeable shot for him. He's a great shooter. And you take the official completely out of the ball game. Six minutes remaining. Cal leading by three. O'Bannon to tie. Misses. Buckley and Kidd. Buckley fouled. 
and if looks could kill, there'd be about two dead Bruins in that floor right now, the way that Buckley's looking at his opponent. Messiah's really saved the basket. He got back, and there's really not a whole lot you can do. The fast break was developing, and it would have been a three-on-one. But he did a very good job of getting himself positioned between Buckley and the basket and, and really took away a sure basket. That was Edney's second foul of the game. Monty Buckley having a career day with 22 points. Doubling his average. Jason Kidd just he needs one more point to record his fourth triple double of the season, Mark. The only player in Pac-10 history to record three triple doubles. Not even you did that, Larry. <laughs> All right, they didn't keep that statistic when I played. Edney, nice pass inside. And the freshman said, I don't think so, to Ed O'Bannon. But he fouls him in the process. Michael Stewart will learn. When you come off the basketball like this, he's the help side defender. He comes over. There's a nice interior pass. He comes away from his man, and he makes a great decision on that because it's a sure duck by Ed O'Bannon. He's going to go up and, and, and dunk the basketball. Michael Stewart crossed the lane, got there a little late, did challenge the dunk, but contact was made on the body. O'Bannon with his 23rd point of the game. McQueen coming into the game, Stewart checking out. And he receives an appreciative hand from the fans. Easy Ed, a per picture perfect 9 for 9, now 10 for 10 from the line. The Bruins hanging around, they trail by 3. These all become very big possessions. Tarver on McQueen. Does California try and post up Jason Kidd here on Edney? They will do that occasionally. They like to do that out of, out of timeouts. They like to do it on their inbound play. Edney calls for the traveling violation. We saw Jason before the game working on his low post moves. <laughs> all guards do that before the game. The, the big guys are outside shooting three-pointers, and the guards are all inside working on their inside game. Both teams with an equal amount of turnovers. Uh, that's where they, they will try and post them out of the quick inbound situation. That's what they go to. He's got body. And he was fouled inside. You've got to keep in mind that Jason Kidd is 6'4", but there's 205 pounds packed on that frame. And, and it's very compact. You know, he's, he's very strong in his lower body, which really enables him to, to change the shot, get up in the air. There's a strength there. Reminiscent of Timmy Hardaway, where you see, you see a player 6'1", 6'2", but the real bulk of their strength and weight is in their lower body. And here we are seeing maybe the one flaw in his game. Foul shooting. And unfortunately for Jason Kidd, that's something that he can work on and improve. Those other skills that he has, that he has are things that you cannot coach. You're just born with. Yeah, I'll take the rest of the package if I'm a coach. <laughs> UCLA can tie with a three. The big check goes to the bank, and he'll go to the foul line for two. Of course, he was very patient that time. He worked hard without the basketball, and when he received it on, on the left side low block, he, he had a chance to pump fake and up and under and really set himself up, up well for that shot attempt. That, no doubt, coming from the work that he did this past summer at Pete Newell's big man's camp. Needing making the first of two, he has 13 in the game. He played internationally for the Czech Republic team in the World University Games up in Buffalo. That gave him a lot of confidence. And he came back this summer to campus with one of those bodies by Jake. <laughs> well, his father was an assistant coach on that team, so I'm sure he got a lot more shot attempts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cal leads by two with four and a half to play. The Bruins ranked number one in the country, 14-0 overall, 7-0 in the Pac-10. 
Davidson left wide open. He's got to take that shot there. Well, it was a good decision by him. There's still six seconds left on the shot clock, and that's really not a shot he was comfortable in shooting. Down to two on the clock. Buckley misses, and Randy Duck with the rebound. You hate to see that happen if you're UCLA. You work so hard defensively, and then you lose the ball on the board. You get them to take, you get Cal to take a tough shot. It's not going to go in, and now you've got to play defense all over again. And this foul will be called against Sean Tarver. And Randy Duck looked over at his bench and kind of gave him a wink <laughs> like, I got him. Hey, that might have been a flop. You get your hands away from your torso and you get your feet set and there's a lot of contact. You can often draw the attention of the referee and get that call. Randy Duck's not a drama major, is he? <laughs> He's a very athletic player. High jump, 6'8 in high school. And a soft touch out of Darlin, Texas. He won their Midnight Madness slam dunk contest so as they say on the playgrounds of new york he's got some hops got some serious hops <laughs> randy duff catches in on two and cal leads 72 to 68 at 343 to play the freshman michael stewart has checked back into the game and the bears have a very big lineup back on the floor Stewart's back in. He did a fine job on the defensive board. Cal certainly now cannot afford to give up offensive rebounds. Really tough to get into those passing lanes or move the ball around with those arms spread out of all those big people. It's a wide 1-3-1 one, one zone, and they really spread it out and stretch it out. And again, the weaknesses are on, on the elbows and on the baseline. Edney, a little strong, tipped up twice. Who's got it? It's Cal's ball. Two players that time, Charles O'Bannon and Jason Kidd, really going after the basketball. And it's a tough call, but again, Charlie Range right there. Four point lead. Kidd posting up Edney. Interior passing a premium. And Jason Kidd with another assist. Jamison has eight. And the lead is up to six. Under three minutes to go. The wide zone and stretches from one end of the court to the other. And again, you attack it if the elbows are on the baseline. Charles O'Bannon is short. Kid wants it. Jason Kidd with his 11th point and another triple double. Inside posted up on that position. Had a good shot, but elected to dish it to a teammate for an easier shot. But he's doing it at both ends. Now with the inside-outside move, never broke stride, planned so he gets himself under control and finishes strong. The only thing I want to ask Jason is, can I get some fries with that shake? <laughs> what a shake he put on Tyus Edney. His fourth career triple-double. 12 assists, 12 rebounds, and 11 points. Jason with another steal and another bucket. Big time player. Playing the passing lane, anticipating, taking it to the hole. He jokes about not being the athlete that he used to be. Well, it's Jason's world right now, and right now everyone else is just living in it. 140 to play. Next Sunday, and it's an exciting regional doubleheader here on ABC's Pizza Hut College Basketball. First, 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific, 8th ranked Mass takes on number 9, Kentucky, or a Big 8 battle as number 3, Kansas, hosts Nebraska. Then in Game 2, Virginia takes on Charlie Ward and Florida State, or Louisville, host Vanderbilt. All next Sunday here on ABC Sports. And just in case you were wondering, uh, Jason Kidd had time for four steals this afternoon. Just a, a tribute 
to how well he anticipates. He reads the eye of the man, the eyes of the man with the ball, and he's always alert to play the passing lane. You know, let's let's be spoiled sports and party poopers. What about his foul shooting? He's brick two right here. He's now three of eight from the line. It's going to become of monumental importance for Jason Kidd and Cal in close ball games. He will be on the ball. The ball will be in his hands 90% of the time. And he must be a player that can step up to the line and hit those clutch free throws. Yeah, you want your point guard to be able to do that. Dollar gets nothing but change. 118 to play. Edney mugs Kidd. The score personal is on Tyus Edney. He's going after the ball, which you want to do. And that ensures you of not getting called for the intentional foul, particularly late in the ball game. Larry, let's go back a little bit and think about what the turning point or the key juncture in this game would be. And we'll come back and answer that question and try and find out if Jim Harris can answer it too. But right now, one three one zone, you know, it's, it's such a big zone. You've got Jameson at 6'11", you've got Murray at 6'7", you've got Stewart at 6'10", lined up with their arms, stretched completely around the court. I think that really bothered UCLA and their inability to hit the outside shot has really given Cal the, the run in the lead. Speaking of which, the Bruins are one of 17, I repeat, one of 17 from three-point territory. Facing their first loss of the season. Edney can't buy a call. Duck has it knocked away, and it's still Cal's ball. Cal will try and take as much time off the clock as they possibly can. Tyus Edney pleading his case that he was fouled when he attempted that shot. Less than a minute to play. McQueen with the ball out to Duck. Charles O'Bannon with the steal. UCLA really has had a tough time in the Bay Area over the last three days. Had a close call up at Stanford. Ran into foul trouble. The big men got into foul trouble. They had to go to a zone. They ended up winning by four points, but they can't dodge the bullet today. They're a fine basketball team. They haven't scored in five minutes and 42 seconds. And they play poorly and won. And I think this will be a, a learning experience for the Bruins to take this back home and to watch video and see where they went wrong, what they've got to do to improve their outside shooting. It's not like this is the first time that a number one team has lost this year. <laughs> it's almost a detriment to hold on to that number one ranking. Kid with 15 points. And his fourth career triple-double. Make it 16. Cal's going to improve to 12 and 4. And 5 and 2 in the contrast. Charles O'Bannon going high for the bucket. The slasher. Nice move. That time did a terrific job on Ty Sedney of not fouling, not going for a pump fake, and not letting Ty get that three point look at the basket. Cal is four and one here at the Oakland Coliseum, soon to be five and one, and that is Edney's fifth personal foul. He fouls out, out with nine points. Terrific little player. It should be a very interesting rematch when they play down in Los Angeles to see Tyus and Jason hook up again. And keep in mind that last year down at Poly Pavilion, the Bruins were handed their worst home loss ever by this Cal team. O'Bannon checking out of the ball game for the Bruins. Zita coming back in. O'Bannon leaving with 22 points. Check that, make it 24. Murray with 21. This is what we call real garbage time. The referees letting Charles O'Bannon get away with hanging on the rim. He attempted a follow-up tip dunk. And really out of frustration, more than anything else, hung on the rim. And the referees chose not 
Who had insult to injury and called that. And Todd Bozeman, in his first full season as head coach at Cal, will taste the sweet victory. And this is a sweet one for them. He has a real close relationship with a lot of his players. Very intimate relationship with most of his players. Watching him at practice yesterday, it was really interesting to watch how he got on his freshman, but at the same time, he, he loved them. Particularly Michael Stewart. Every time Michael Stewart did something, it appeared to be wrong, but he coached him. He taught him. He's just done a terrific job since he's taken over the reins of Cal. And a real classy guy, too. That's it! <laughs>